This demonstration requires the use of a gold leaf electroscope. The glass bottle protects the fine gold leaf, which is attached to the flat top by a stem of metal. The gold leaf is extremely fine and delicate. If we add an electric charge to the plate on the top, then that charge instantly spreads to the gold leaf, and the leaves repel. They repel because they're connected together and therefore must have the same charge. In this particular demonstration, the gold leaf electroscope will be negatively charged. Apart from applying a negative charge to the whole electroscope, we'll also put a zinc plate on the top. We could illuminate the zinc plate with all sorts of colours of light, but we're going to consider two. If we shine green light onto the plate, then it reflects, but nothing else happens. But if we swap the green light for even a weak ultraviolet lamp, the gold leaves droop, the electroscope has discharged. Even if we use a very, very intense beam of green light, still it will not discharge the electroscope. These observations, first made over a hundred years ago, cannot be explained by the wave theory of light. The observations led to the realization that light had dual properties, those of both particles and of waves. This idea was first formulated and proposed by Einstein in about 1905, when he suggested that waves come in bundles or packets, which he called photons. Further, he suggested that the energy of the photons was proportional to their frequency. So, for example, violet photons would have more energy than red ones. The equation we now use is in the form E equals HF, where H is the constant of proportionality, now called Planck's constant. Going back to the photoelectric effect, the explanation is that the green light, the photons are relatively small, they haven't got much energy and therefore they simply bounce off the zinc plate, whereas ultraviolet photons are larger packets of energy. As they reach the plate and strike it, they have enough energy to lift off the electrons on the surface, and so they liberate these electrons, discharging the electroscope. If we used photons of even higher energy, for example X-rays, then that extra energy would be imparted to the electrons in the form of kinetic energy. This graph relates the frequency of the photons to the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons. In most cases, some of the energy of the photon will end up as heat. But in a few cases, all of the energy of the photon is used to lift it off the surface and then give it kinetic energy. There is a proportional relationship between the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons and the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation. The maximum kinetic energy of the electron is equal to HF, which is the energy of the photon, minus phi, which is the work function. The work function, phi, is the energy required to lift the electron off the surface. The intersection on the x-axis marks the photons at the threshold frequency. The photons at this frequency have just sufficient energy to lift the electron off the surface. At that point, the energy of the photon, HF, equals phi. If we rearrange that, then frequency is phi over h. If we put other materials on the top of the electroscope, rather than zinc, other metals for example, the threshold frequencies would be different, because the work function for each one will be different. We have a family of graphs, all with the same gradient, but with different intersections. Thank you for watching.